system. The golden kitchen design rules, these are in no particular order, and these aren't anything that you've never heard of before either. But uh, I think this is a great way for us to kind of systematically look at a kitchen design and figure out, okay, is this going to work for us? And uh, is this going to be something that's functional um, for me and my family? All right, let's jump into these. These are the five rules, and then we will uh, break each one down, and then we'll look at some pictures of some kitchens. So number one is the work triangle. That is still very important, and we'll chat about that. Number two is, is your kitchen functional and social? So it's not only good to be functional, it's also nice if your kitchen has some social aspect to it. And we're going to chat about that and what that looks like. We're going to look talk about door operation. Maybe this is one of the most underlooked things in kitchen design, but the way that doors open, not only cabinet doors, but appliance doors and maybe even entry doors into that kitchen. We're going to talk about cleanup because the biggest thing at the end of the day, at the end of the meal is getting all that stuff cleaned up. And if you're anything like me and you just love doing dishes, this is very, very important. And of course, unpacking and storage. This has to do with all the food that has to come into that home or your kitchen. Where does it go? How is it unpacked? Is it is it done in such a way that's convenient for you? Or is it really a, a big hassle? So those are the five golden rules in a nutshell. We're going to break these down starting right now. So let's talk about the work triangle. We've talked about this lots on the live stream. I've talked about it lots on my channel. And I have my own opinions on the work triangle. But I found this definition, which I thought was one of the better definitions I've read on the work triangle. Very simple, simply put. And it's like this. The work triangle, the triangle made by the stove, the sink, and the refrigerator should be compact enough that it allows convenient and effective circulation for the chef but generous enough that two people working in the kitchen aren't bumping into one another. I don't know about you, that is one of the best definitions of the work triangle I've ever read. Instead of giving you numbers, and instead of giving you distances from here to here to here to here, it's just, hey, basically, it doesn't need to be too small, and it doesn't need to be too big. I mean, simply put, if your kitchen is designed in such a way that you're not traveling all around the place and or you're not bumping elbows just trying to do everything, then that's a good way to think about kitchen design. We want our kitchens to be functional, and if it's a one-person kitchen where you are using the kitchen mostly in the home, then you want that kitchen to be spaced out in such a way that you have access to everything, and you're not going too far from one appliance to the other, and on and on. But if there's more than one person in that kitchen, not just people cooking, but also people just in the kitchen. If you have a family, there goes my camera, if you have a family or if you have people around and they're in the kitchen a lot, you want to be able to function in the kitchen in such a way that you're, you know, it's not annoying. So you want your kitchen work triangle to be not something that is uh, too small or too big, but generous enough that two people can work, but compact enough that it's convenient and it provides enough circulation. So I think that was a very good and uh, clear message on the kitchen triangle. It's not something that needs to be ignored and it's not something that uh, you need to follow some kind of strict rule about the kitchen triangle is there as a guideline again as just a way as a as for us to look through our kitchen design to determine whether or not how functional it is for us the end user and while you can go on a, a huge binge on making sure that all the measurements are you know it, within working t you know down to a t everything is fine-tuned you can go overboard and drive yourself, you know, batty by doing that. So the best thing to do is make sure that, hey, it's not too big. It's not too small. It's just right. Three bear style kitchen design. That's what we're trying to do today. Get Goldilocks in and it's a home run. Okay, the next thing we'll chat about is this functional and social. So your kitchen needs to be a little bit of both of these things. Usually a good mix, depending on how social you want to be. The kitchen should always be functional. Uh, there's no way around that. But if you want to have a functional kitchen, it should also help if it would also help if it's a social kitchen, if you want to have people in and around that home. Now, you would think that number one, if it's an open concept kitchen, then it's automatically going to be a social space, which yes, it sort of lends itself to that. But that doesn't mean the kitchen, the way it functions is lends itself to being social. And also, even if you have a closed in kitchen, that does not mean that your kitchen needs to be antisocial. It's just has to be designed in a way that 
you know, embraces that social aspect that you want it to be, even though it's in an enclosed space in a separate room. So your kitchen it needs to be functional and sprinkled with a touch of sociability. The kitchen is the heart of the home, a space people naturally gravitate to. It's because there's food there. With this in mind, gathering and entertaining areas in the kitchen should be independent of the work triangle so that guests can nibble on appetizers, enjoy a drink, watch the chef without getting in the way of cooking. So you'd want to design these spaces so that the chef, the cook, whomever is making your meal is unhindered by you sitting there taking up space, eating pickles. You want to make sure that it's designed in a way that it's still social, that everyone can interact, and that the, the main thing can get done unhindered, which is making the food. That's what we're here for. We want food to be made. The kitchen's all about making food. We can talk about colors and placement and functionality, but if the food doesn't come out of there, what are we doing? This is, this is all about food. So we want to make sure that that is nailed down. So that's the number two kind of golden rule is make sure it's functional slash a social space. Number five is this door operation. So this has to do with not only cabinet doors, but appliance doors and doors opening into that space as well. And the architectural drawings should include the geometry of appliance doors. We'll look at this later on a few of these slides. This typically includes the swing of the refrigerator doors, the oven and dishwasher in their open positions, and any other key operations like pull out rubbish bins. While these operations will most likely overlap in some areas, it's important to control which ones overlap. For instance, the oven door and dishwasher door can have overlapping operations as the two are typically in use at different times. So when we're talking about door operations, so let's talk about appliance doors. When you have a floor plan, sometimes it's good to see how those doors open and interact with each other. You've probably come across a scenario where your dishwasher door and maybe your oven door kind of will hit each other if they're both open at the same time, or maybe the way your fridge opens into a pantry door or an oven door or any other door. It's good to see where these things open and close and how you're going to interact with them. So make sure you're not tripping over anything. I tripped over my dishwasher door one time when it was open and I <laughs> almost broke my neck. So it's important that you know where things are. In fact, not only that, but also the way that drawers open, when a drawer is open and an appliance door is open, how do those things interact with each other as well? So if you have an island with a, maybe a drawer bank, and then behind that, um, maybe on a main run of cabinets, you have a dishwasher. When those drawers are open and the dishwasher door is down, how much room is there to maneuver around? That's a fairly common experience, especially I know in our home, that's sort of, that is the experience because we keep our dishes in a drawer and when the dishwasher door is open, it's very easy. You stand there and just transfer everything in. You don't have to go anywhere and stand in one place. But if someone were to come through that area, it'd basically be a tripping hazard because everything's open at once. So it's good to assess what, are, what things are important and what things can over, overlap. And when is it important not to overlap any of these things so that uh, you have perfect function of all this stuff. Um so let's keep going to this next one here. So that's door operation. So very uh, consider that one. Okay, plus uh, let's hold on. We'll talk about uh, also doors opening into your kitchen. If you have a closed off kitchen or you have an open kitchen space, but there is some kind of swinging door, it's good to make sure that the, the way those doors are swinging isn't interrupting the flow of traffic or the flow of people working in that space along with the cabinet doors. I talk th about this uh, often, um, the way cabinet doors are hinged. This is really important to the way that you access particular cabinets, wall cabinets and base cabinets. For instance, corner base cabinets, 90 degree corner. If, they, if, had, if it's hinged to the right and it's hitting an appliance, that's not the best thing that should be opening away from appliance. Or if you're standing at your range and you have two wall cabinets, they should the best use is that they open out so that you are not looking around them and the doors not opening into your head. That's not always possible depending on if it's a two door cabinet, but those are the things that you need to think about and often get missed in a kitchen design, um, uh, you know, experience. 
That's the best word I have. All right, door operation. Okay, uh, let's go to this next one. So clean up, clean up, clean up. Everybody lend a hand. All right, you got to make sure that the clean up aspect of your kitchen is done in such a way that it makes sense. It's not a nuisance that your garbage, your sink, your dishwasher, or the other things that you need for that are in locations where they're easy to access. So this is very important. So don't only think about food prep, food storage, landing area, surface, prep area, seating, but how are we gonna clean this place up? Because hey, we got Instagram pictures to take care of. We got Instagram to uh, make um, make happy and we, we have to have a clean kitchen for that. All right, so the sink, rubbish bin. Uh, it, this is an Australian, um, this was taken from an Australian blog actually. So this isn't, these aren't my words, by the way, um, I'm stealing this, but I thought these were very good. So just be clear here. Um, and that's why it's using the word rubbish, I think, because I would just say garbage. So the sink, rubbish, rubbish, garbage bin, and dishwasher have an important linear relationship. I've talked about this lots on my channel. The design of a kitchen should take the sequence of meal cleanup into consideration. Most households clear, rinse, and place dishes into the dishwasher in that order. Subsequently, the kitchen design should locate the bin, or the kitchen design should locate the bin, sink, and dishwasher in a linear order with the bin closest to the eating area. So there's lots of ways to think about that and design that. It doesn't have to be linear. They should be in a zone together so that you're not traveling around, scraping off dishes, obviously, sink, dishwashers, whatever here. Usually, it's just almost common sense that those things are designed together. But but garbage bins can sometimes be on the outskirts somewhere and not thought about so that they're they're kind of a walk. They have to go somewhere. Oftentimes when I'm designing for clients, like I got to put a garbage bin somewhere and where are we going to put it? It's an afterthought. It's got to go somewhere. Maybe we'll put it in that cabinet over there. I don't know. Maybe let's keep it out on the porch. No, the best place in my opinion for your garbage bin is have one underneath your sink. Design underneath that sink properly so you can fit one in there. That's a good size so that you can have that open sink, dishwasher. Everything's just in one big location. If that's not the, the thing you can do, then have some kind of pullout that's also close to your sink. When you do that, though, you're also taking up space for drawers. And many times I would rather have a system of drawers than a garbage pullout. So there's this play of which ones are we going to put, how important are they, and then which ones can we maybe leave by the wayside. And the problem is they're all important, and so we have to figure that out. So that's why it's important to sit down with your designer or plan it out yourself, map out how is this going to work for me, and to make sure that I get these uh, these dishes cleaned up and so that I'm not walking all around the, world, all around the kitchen, dripping stuff all over the floor all the time. So that is number four. And then Number five is this, unpacking and storage. Three of these are, I mean, the first two are pretty standard, but these last three, door operation, cleanup, and this one, I don't think it talked about enough. When I seen this particular article, I thought this was really good. I really liked this. It was well written and, and well thought out, not super long, but very, um, very well thought of. And I could, I can really get behind it, you know? So unpacking and storage um, is very important because you got to get stuff in there before stuff gets cooked and eaten and out of there. It's got to go in there and be stored somewhere. Kind of makes sense. Kitchen ergonomics should address more than just cooking. How you enter your home and unload groceries is an important and often overlooked design consideration. It is. Locating the refrigerator and pantry near the end of a kitchen and preferably near some countertop makes a kitchen work much more smoothly in general. I, th I, I agree. I think that that's a blanket statement, of course, that we can't just do that in every situation. However, in a lot of situations, that would work. My main goal is not only that the fridge or the pantry are located near an entry door, but that there's ample amount of landing area that's uninterrupted where you can put groceries on and unpack so that they can go into the places where they need to go. That I think is really important. The fridge location near a door, that might not work for everybody. That might not be possible in every design. So take that one with a bit of a grain of salt and consider that in the design in such a way that it would make sense for you 
but that doesn't make sense for everybody. However, it does make sense that you have a place that you can unpack groceries and get them put away so that you're not hauling them from you know the the car to the living room to maybe the dining room table to wherever and just you know it just takes longer and it's whatever it's a mess it'd be more convenient if you could do it in in a way that would make sense and that's something that should be chatted about and talked about when you're designing a kitchen so that you can figure those things out that's um and, and that has to do with I love the word ergonomics, by the way, I mean, just kitchen ergonomics. So making sure that uh, you just consider these things, and it's often overlooked. And uh, all these things, uh, a lot of these things are often overlooked. The five golden rules, I think are really good. Let's just look at them in real quick again, in just simple form here. The work triangle. So always consider that you have a functional working triangle. It's almost like in today's world, um, you don't really have to think about that. The kitchen triangle almost happens by itself. You'd have to almost go out of your way to, to design a kitchen that doesn't have a fairly functional kitchen triangle. Of course, I'll be tested on this. Uh, you know, um, there's always those kitchens out there that just, you know, defy the odds. But if you're designing a space and you have zero background in in kitchen design, you've you've never you've never tried kitchen design. You've never thought about it. All you've done is just worked in your kitchen. You know what kind of works for you and what doesn't work for you. And you sat down to try to design a kitchen you'd most likely figure out a way to make sure that your fridge and your stove and your sink are in locations that work. So the kitchen triangle can sometimes be looked at as, oh, I gotta make sure it's, it's perfect, but it almost happens. Now there's lots of ways where this wouldn't happen, of course, and that is when you put an island into the mix. So you can have an island in the middle of a kitchen and you can have appliances around that island in such a way that the island interrupts the workflow. But that's not that big a deal, in my opinion. You just work around that. If you can get them in such a way that they're close, that's fine. But, you know, the refrigerator, for instance, I think a refrigerator should be the most accessible for everyone in the house, regardless of if it's super accessible to the triangle. I know I'm a little bit on the outskirts there. Let me just go full screen while I talk about this. So if your refrigerator is on the outskirts, then everybody in the house has access to the fridge because the fridge is the most used appliance in your home. Everybody can get at the fridge and likely wants to, but not everyone wants to use the oven. Nobody wants to use the dishwasher. So those things can be tucked away. So if the refrigerator is a little bit outside the you know allowable limit of a functioning kitchen triangle, but it's very functional for everyone in the home to access, that's a thumbs up for me, regardless of if an island interrupts that, regardless of the whatever. I think that those are conversations that need to be had with a designer and the way you use that space and what's important for you. And if that doesn't work and it needs to be tucked in that kitchen more and you don't necessarily care that everybody else is going to be coming into that space to get at the refrigerator, then again, that's the conversation you need to have. So the work triangle, functional and social at the same time, making sure that if that is something that's important to you, that you plan that out. My kitchen doesn't need to be functional because I have no friends and no one's ever going to come over to my house. So it doesn't matter how functional it is. I don't want people around while I'm cooking, um, whatever it is, whatever it is, then it matters less for you. But maybe you entertain a lot, maybe you have a large family, you know, whatever the case may be. So consider that, that those two things mesh. Door operation, of course, super important, not talked about hardly enough. Clean up, clean up, clean up. Everybody do it. Everybody lend a hand and make sure you can unpack stuff without, you know, being just annoyed. Sound good? I hope it sounds good. If you like that so far, give it a thumbs up. Those are the five golden rules of kitchen design. And we're going to look at some floor plans and some kitchens and see if these five golden rules were followed and if we can kind of pick these apart. I hope that 
uh, that helps. And if you're watching this replay, I appreciate you watching up to this point, And I do appreciate a thumbs up along the way. But hello, everyone in the chat. I'm going to just take a few minutes to uh, look into the chat here because I have not um, uh, said hi to anybody so far. So I'm going to start at the bottom. We're just working my way up really quickly. And I did see a comment from Phil. Oh, Phil here uh, a little bit earlier about Canadian bacon. And let me tell you, it's just called bacon. It's like, I'm sure American cheese is just called cheese in, in, in the States. So it's just bacon. You know, if you, you want some bacon, come get some bacon. You can get Canadian bacon, I guess, but that doesn't make sense. So, <laughs> all right. All excellent tips from the master of kitchen design. MTD. Thank you, Helen. You got a new avatar. Looks great. Thanks so much for being here. Appreciate it. I see everyone's on here. I'm going to miss something here. Hey, Daniel in. Hi, Mark. I don't know if you remember me. I do, but it's been one and a half years since you designed my kitchen. So far, I have no regrets at all, at all with the design and layout. Thanks, Daniel, man. That's awesome. I appreciate you uh, mentioning that. That's really that's really great. That is good news. Lynn. Hey, Lynn, you're back again. The triangle is a good rule of thumb, but always look at how you use the space. Yes. Hey, Mark, our upcoming reno will have our triangle interrupted by the island. Oh, but the fridge and pantry will be uh, up at the ends of the U-shape. Yeah, that works. That that whole, That's kind of what I was just talking about in that those are the two things, your pantry and your fridge, especially if you keep your chips in your pantry and your cookies and stuff. And that needs to be accessible to everyone. And so does your fridge. So if they're on either ends of the U-shape, I think that's a good way to design that. Um, let me just flip up here a little bit. Gretchen, hey, love this topic. Awesome. I put so much thought into the function of my kitchen and then figured out the form. Yeah, function is really, really important. Very cool. Matthew's here. Matthew, my garbage bin is currently at the end of the peninsula, moving it directly adjacent to the sink. Mirror. Awesome. Yeah. The garbage is one of those things that, um, you know, it's like, do I have to put this in my kitchen? Do I have to take a whole cabinet for a garbage bin? Why? But we do. We do, we do, we do. Um, I'm designing a kitchen now for a project. And, you know, I got to think about garbage. I'm like, oh, I don't want to put garbage in here, but I got to. Uh, in I'm months from final selection, but good to know. I, oh, okay. You're talking to someone else. Okay. Okay. Let's keep going. We'll flip around here. Oh, here we go. All right. Hey, Haley from central Ontario. Cool. And oh, <laughs> read bacon. We call Canadian bacon back bacon, at least in my region. So yeah. Okay. Well, bacon and back bacon to me are different things as well. So back bacon would be kind of thicker, fattier chunks of bacon and uh, bacon strips, you know, like you get on your hamburger would be bacon. Cool. I, I, we're probably talking about the same thing. All right. Okay, cool. That's the couple new ones coming in. Then we'll go back to these. All right, Trisha. Hey. Oh, wait, no. You got a big you got a comment. Hold on. I'm getting there. I agree. The fridge should be on the outside. That way you don't have to move if cooking. Yeah. If it should be yeah, accessible to everyone. So that's a really good way to do it. Here we go. Hey, Kathy. As someone who didn't have a place in the kitchen for uh, trash for 30 years, I'm delighted to give a cabinet near the sink for that purpose. Yeah. You, and it's interesting how you get um, used to doing something a particular way. And then when you do something new in, in a kitchen, it can, it can be a little challenging to get used to it. I oftentimes will go to a particular cabinet thinking it's something else. And it's because it, that's where it was in my old kitchen from another home. But every now and then it's like, muscle memory kicks in and I, and I go do that. All right, let's go and talk about um, some of these plans. I want to show you some floor plans and I want to show you some pictures of those kitchens completed. And we'll look at these through the lens of the five golden rules. So um, hopefully you can remember what they are as we go, but I'll remind you as we head through this. So this is the first floor plan that we're going to look at. So this is a, a basic floor plan architectural drawing. And you can see in this floor plan a few different key elements. Um, and you've likely seen something like this before if you've had a kitchen designed or um, you, you, maybe you watch some, some of my content, you'll see some of this stuff sometimes uh, even here on the live stream. So the part I want us to look at is we have 
uh, door openings that you can see with these little dashed uh, for the flip down doors, uh, dash lines, and then the refrigerator swinging doors. So we can see we can see how these doors swing. So a couple things to, to notice for this kitchen. One, you have doors that swing out uh, that go probably outside. So that's an exterior door. Uh, we can't really see the rest of the house, but we can see how all of these doors uh, interact with each other. And we can get an idea if they have the kitchen triangle uh, outlined and I don't think you can see my mouse so why am I moving it but they have this kitchen triangle outline you can see it's a shaded in triangle between the refrigerator the sink and the range and so we can see how that operates and then of course we have all these opening doors and you can see the dishwasher and the two oven doors uh, will interrupt each other if those are used at the same time you can see the trash pull out on the right side this is a great way to do it by the way trash on the right or left dishwasher on the right or left and the sink in between and uh, we can see how those things operate and then so this is really important so think about in terms of the triangle i say we, we have a really good working triangle i like the fridge placement as it's on the outside and so easier for people in the dining room or coming in from probably the other side here to access that refrigerator because vice versa, it could be tucked away in where that microwave is. That's another place where, you know, it could potentially maybe be. And that would might be out of tucked in too far and, and not in the greatest location. So we have the refrigerator and the, that triangle works really well. We can see the opening and so we can assess, okay, I can live with the fact that I'll probably not have my oven door and my dishwasher door open at the same time. That's not going to be that big of an issue. What would be an issue is if the refrigerator door is hitting maybe the oven or, you know, there's some kind of hindrance there. Now, this doesn't show you cabinet doors and the way that they open or drawers, but that is something that you can work through with your designer uh, to, to see how that how those things operate. One of the interesting things, of course, with the IKEA and not not that everything has to be IKEA. I do talk about it sometimes, but you can hit open on their floor on their kitchen designer uh, planner and the door will open and you can see how it operates and i do that as well with my uh, 3d renderings i can just open a door of a cabinet to show you what that looks like so we, we think about cleanup so we got the cleanup area we have a really nice big island so that when uh, things come in maybe from that outside door groceries that everything can get cleaned up in such a way that uh or or put away sorry um in such a way that it's it's very easy you're not moving all around the place so i think this is a, a pretty good layout i like it let's look at some pictures of what this looks like here's the finished product of this kitchen we can see nice big pantries to the right we can see the fridge which is paneled um, on the left and a very beautiful design everything is right there there's another one here here's the inside of the island with the oven and beautiful view of the window with your breakfast nook lots of cabinetry space for storage big uninterrupted surface which i love on the island that's my favorite way to do an island is just have one nice big clean surface put all your groceries on there get everything packed away it looks beautiful so this kitchen really covers all the, the bases and it's a it's a nice size and it's very well designed you're going to see a few of these uh types of doors because these all come from the same company actually uh that we're looking at but so you'll notice this interesting kitchen uh door inset style that that's um that's I, I don't i haven't seen quite a lot of and i'll just tell you right off the bat i'm not a super fan of the way the range hood comes up through that cabinet and pokes up through and then goes to the ceiling so that's just like my own personal thing i'm like eh, i don't know if i like the look of that but it's how it's done so it's you know whatever it's all good so this is great and oh i noticed terrence saying uh, i love kitchens without seating yeah um, I have to agree with you there as well. There's no need to put seating in a kitchen just for the sake of putting seating in a kitchen. It doesn't, it's not necessary. Uh, these are the, we're in the 2020s now. We can, we can kind of say goodbye to that era and we can, we can functionalize the kitchen in such a way. However, if you want to have seating, by all means, go right ahead. Nothing wrong with it, but it can sometimes be just more of a nuisance than anything else. Lots of storage, beautiful kitchen. Um, let's go to the next one. All right. Yeah. Beautiful wood too. Oh, very nice. Okay. Here's the next floor plan. Hope you can see that. Okay. And so you can see again, the triangle we have that it's, it's not too big. It's not too small. It's, it's pretty convenient triangle. Again, the refrigerator is on an outside 
uh, of that space, uh, as opposed to, well, in this there's windows, so it couldn't really be put anywhere else. So it's it by default, by design, almost by the way that this is, that it, it, it goes there. Um, so that that's that's here nor there, but it just happens to be that it works out in a great spot. So beautiful kitchen triangle. Again, we have the cleanup, which is done trash, sink, and dishwasher. So this seems to be a theme with these guys, but um, I'm not against it. I think it's great. The, the only thing that would be very good next to a sink is uh, maybe a cutlery drawer. And so that's why I think under the sink can be a great place for garbage um, as well. And then you have space for uh, cutlery and a drawer bank, but um, you have to design that sink cabinet in such a way that that works. And that's something that can be planned out. All right. Uh, so as far as bringing things into this kitchen, it looks like there's ample spot for an uninterrupted uh, place. Um, there, the door openings, there's nothing here is hindering any door. So that's beautiful. Um, so this is really good. What do we got? We got the triangle. Oh, it's functional. Yeah, well, it's very functional kitchen. Plus, you got some bar seating there. So it's also social at the same time. Here's a picture of that kitchen. Um, interesting. I just think these door styles on the wall cabinets are are interesting. Again, they did that thing with the hood. They're, they're, they're doing that quite a bit. And uh, not my favorite look. But anyway, it is what it is. So, But at, at the same time, when I look at some kitchens like this, I although maybe there's some things I wouldn't do, I always get inspired by just little details. And, um, you know, I, when, I, when I see things that I haven't seen before, I really enjoy uh, seeing that. they You can't really tell in this picture. And I'll look at one more. You can't tell in that one either. So I'm, I'm going to go back one picture. Uh, oh, there's two windows, uh, one over the sink and one uh, right behind that. And they have this interesting balance that goes right over the top. You see the two little lights in each of them interesting look ties the two wall cabins together in a particular fashion again you can they're using the top for some open you know shelving kind of thing which is here nor there but a very beautiful kitchen handles are too big but that's my you know that's personal preference you know what i think about that uh, or maybe you don't but i don't like large oversized handles here's another beautiful look here these are um a very nice vertical matching grain door which is very nice and this is a, a quarter cut veneer, which means it's a very narrow and tight grain. Um, so that's uh, that's cool to see. Also, I'm going to go back one question. I just love how perfect, perfectly symmetrical you look down, how everything is. <laughs> I love that. I like I, that's, that's just the way I'm kind of wired. So I, I think that's really beautiful. Awesome. All right, let's go back to the floor plan for a second so we can have a look here. I want to bring up Raymond's. Raymond, hey, man, uh, in the galley kitchen, I would switch the trash and dishwasher location so the trash would be under the cutting work area. Yeah, good point. Good point there. Uh, so you can see in this design, the trash is on the right, dishwasher is on the left. And it might make more sense, like Raymond saying, to switch those. So that's that's good because yeah, you will be uh, probably prepping. Well, it depends. You might be prepping under that window, and so you'd turn directly to your left or right. So I don't know. It depends on where you're prepping, if that would matter. But if you're prepping by the sink side to the left of the sink, then it might be more convenient there. And so so maybe it depends on how you how you use the space. But yeah, that's a good point. And thanks for mentioning that. All right, let's keep on trucking here. So that's beautiful. Nice light wood. No white kitchen so far of the two of these. All right, let's look at the next floor plan. Oh, another thing I'll pick out. Sorry, I just want to I want to pick apart these as I go. You'll notice the panel on this does not it it the ca the countertop does not overhang. And that's not something we see a lot of in North America. Normally that panel would overhang. But in this design, there's no overhang. And to me, I'm thinking that would be a real dirt collector. And that's why it's important to have an overhang. I'm just picking up these little tiny things that probably don't matter. But that's just something that I, I see. Nothing to do with the rest of this kitchen. I think it's very beautiful, by the way. Um, but it's the little details that count. And uh, yeah, very good. Let's go to the next one. Wow, here we go. All right, again, we have this 
Very uh, nice architectural drawing. We have our kitchen triangle. We can see that it, it, you know, it looks functional at first view. It's hard to know. But uh, some interesting stuff is happening here. We can see all the doors opening. None of the doors are interrupting any of the other doors. So that's always good. So the trash in the corner, that has me a little bit concerned just about operation and, and then what's in that corner for a cabinet. But maybe that's here nor there. And this is a very social kitchen as well because they have island seating plus the dining rooms there. So everything's tied together into this one space. And you, I would almost classify this as a closed separate kitchen in the sense that... Uh, you know, this is, it's definitely open concept, but it's, it's kind of a hybrid in, in my opinion. There's lots of uh, landing area um, for putting away uh, all of your, all of your stuff and your refrigerator is conveniently located. It's tucked in though. So that might be a little bit of a nuisance. However, in keeping with the kitchen triangle, I can see how they did that. So let's go to this, uh, this one. Here we go. Interesting. When you look at the floor plan, uh, which is here, and you flip to the kitchen, you're like, oh, okay. <laughs> That's what it looks like. Again, with the range hood. <laughs> anyway, it's just the way they do it. It's fine. Beautiful stainless. Um, it doesn't have any, any like, it's a brushed, like, nice stainless. And that door style is pretty pretty popular with these guys. Um, very nice. I mean, man, they they do this thing with the countertop, though, on, on it seems like all these designs. And... Um, yeah, you can see the trash. It looks like there is um, in that corner, probably a blind corner cabinet. So that works. There's a nice filler space there. This kitchen has a drawer underneath the sink, which is pretty cool. So I like that. So lots of landing area. Pretty cool. Pretty decent kitchen triangle. Now, the only thing I'm, I'm not a huge fan of, and this is where it comes down to personal stuff, is the way those cabinets finish into that window. And so there'd be a space there, of course. But I guess there's no other way to do that. Um, just too bad that the window had to go that that far. Anyway, that that's just the way it is. Here's the picture of the kitchen. It's a different kitchen, um, the way it's all tied together. But you can see that fridge tucked away there. Nice big countertop, easy cleanup, lots of space to put stuff away. It's very social, working triangle. So when you're looking at the golden rules, I guess, of these um, that we're, we're considering uh, from earlier, then it, if it covers all the bases, all of these kitchens are, are very functional and very workable. And there wouldn't be a lot you'd have to do with them to, to change them up to be any better, really. Maybe move an appliance or, you know, trash or something like that. But these are, are, are very well done. So I think that's very good. Uh, Kara's here. What's she saying? Unless you have a lot of people in the house that actually eat at the same time, I see no need for island seating or there's perfectly good uh, table three feet away. Oh, oh, yeah. So interesting. Um, let's see. What's your take on that? Let's just go back to the floor plan. Yeah, it, it is very close to the dining room. And um, yeah, I agree. I'm, like I said, I'm, I don't think you need to have seating for the sake of having seating. That could just be cabinetry uh, or more storage. You know, you have a bar still there, you drink a coffee. You probably, It's probably never used. So I, I kind of agree with you on that one for sure. Um, there wouldn't be much of a need for that because the kitchen's social enough as it is, as it's open to the dining room. But uh, yeah, it's pretty, uh, pretty, pretty interesting design. I'd probably move the fridge. Uh, if it was me, I'd probably think of a way to do that. Um, anyway, let's go to the next one. Yeah, I see you're looking for Jackie. I haven't seen her. Uh, she could be busy or who knows, hopefully... Um, she's okay. Hey, notice Jackie isn't here. Guess that means we can spam the heck out of Mark's live. I can still kick you out, Phil. <laughs> Jackie's not the only one with power. I can still do it. All right, but I would never do that. Uh, well, maybe it would. Depends on how lippy you got. Let's go to the next one. All right, here's another kitchen plan. Oh, nice, uh, nice one wall kitchen with an island. So we have our our kitchen triangle, we can see that pretty clear. This is an open concept design uh, into the rest of the space. So it's it's social by nature. Um, we'll look at the kitchen in a minute. We have these doors that open and we can see a lot of interruption with these two, but again, fridge and, or not fridge, oven and dishwasher rarely are 
you know, rarely is that you're going to be like, oh, I can't believe this dishwasher and oven to hit each other. Ah, not a big deal uh, overall. But it's good to see that, to see how it does look. Trash again. So all of these kitchens, they really consider these rules of having a, a good cleanup space, lots of area to put away. Um, you know, it's very social, the kitchen triangle. And I, I think it's, uh, you know, they're, I think these are all very nice kitchens. So my only opinion here is I think before even looking at this, uh, I like the pantry. I like the refrigerator location, um, dip, you know, dishwasher, all that stuff is fine. The, I'm not sure why the range is located right there next to that window. So let's just look at the pictures and, oh, did we get the same one? Here it is here. Yeah, so this to me is just gross. Um, sorry. <laughs> so this is, yeah. So th th this isn't working for me. Okay. Um, let's see if there's another picture. No, there's not. There's just one picture of this one. Uh, sorry that there's only one picture. Do I have? Oh, yeah. Okay, sorry. I'm going to go back. My bad. My bad. Um, okay, so they have the they have the cleanup taken care of. That's no problem. They have lots of space for putting stuff away. I prop see here's here's what I don't care about. I don't care that the sink is centered with that window. That, that there's no that, that's not it's not symmetrical for me if that's a thing because you're rarely probably going to be standing dead center on that. You're probably looking at the sink at an angle most times anyway. So what's the big deal if that sink is a, is an offset more to the other side so that you have more landing area on on the on our right side when we're looking at it of that sink so that you have uh, space for putting groceries on uh, as well as the countertop that's by the refrigerator. And I don't know, I, I would rather the sink be centered in the island then it's centered on that window. I think that's what they're trying to do, but I don't know for sure. And then the range is just too close to the window. You could just move that down. I don't know. Okay. So this one wasn't a home run. But in terms of those rules, uh, you know, we're not too far out. out. This could be easily changed um, to look really great. But this doesn't look really great. <laughs> Did someone say... I seen Tetris. Uh, I I lost the comment. All right. Interesting. Phil saying probably didn't want people to open the oven while someone was at the sink. Yeah, I don't know. Interesting. Uh, interesting way to do it. Anyways, let's go to the next one. So that's fine. You don't have to. They don't all have to be home runs. Like some of them can be. Whatever. Uh, this is the West Seattle kitchen. All right. So this is another open concept. Again, nice. It's interesting to see these floor plans. So that then we can look at the design, at the actual kitchen and kind of look at what that looks like. Um, so, so I just see the kitchen kind of looks like a middle finger. Uh, okay. It kind of does. <laughs> All right. Here we go. So again, kitchen triangle in place. Um, ooh. Yeah, I, I would maybe explore a few options here with the refrigerator. That looks to be messy. Um, they got the cleanup, as always. Uh, so that's, that's fine. We have a second sink. So there seems to be enough socialization with the fact that that's kind of a a breakfast nook and some kind of outer area there probably a, you know some kind of great room or something or i see there's a fireplace um we have interrupting doors but this one seems to be the most bothersome to me but i mean when you look at this i love that wood tone it looks looks great uh to me i love the ceiling in this kitchen and the rain hood over that is you know it's okay um so I'd, I'd probably, here's my take on it. I'd maybe switch the fridge and the oven. I know there's landing area right there by that oven when you open it up right on the island. Um, but 
to me, if you're taking something out of the island and putting it here, as opposed to taking it out of the, uh, of the oven rather, and turning around and putting it on the island, um, just easier to take it out and put it down. So I'd switch those two things. You don't need to have landing area by a fridge, in my opinion. A fridge doesn't need landing area. I know, I know that guidelines say you do. I'm just telling you that you're rarely in a fridge going, I got to put this down for my fingers freeze. It's like, it's not a big deal. Just put it down over there. So I would switch those two things around. Love this uh, wood grain though. Very, very nice. Very nice. Very, and this is a thing that they do. All these are wood grain. Um, they're all what's called a uh, quarter cut grain. They're really nice tight grain. And they're all, um, you know, vertical, which is beautiful. And they do this white thing a lot. Okay, so let's let's keep going. I see Gretchen saying, I feel that that island with the sink and cooktop, I don't like the cooktop in the island. Anyway, yeah, I think that you're wasted as well. I, th I don't think there's a need for that sink there as well. This isn't a massive kitchen. And is there a reason for that that's really worth having it? I don't know either. And yes, I'm not a fan of a cooktop in the range either. I'd probably just put the sink there if that was the case and switch those two things. It looks like there's a downdraft on this as well, or maybe that's just a slide in. Oh, it's just a range. Oh, this doesn't work at all. This is not working at all. Okay. I don't know what to say. Here's what I would say. Um, I, would, I would switch the range and put the sink in the island, even though I don't want anything in an island, nothing at all. Um, but that's probably what I do in this case. So... And then the fridge has to be flipped, and then that might work. Uh, let's go back to the floor plan, because Betty's saying, no, don't switch them around. The garage door will hit the refrigerator. Trust me. Okay. I will trust you and have a look. Um, refrigerator. What's going to hit the refrigerator? Uh, da, 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 da. Garage door. Well, here's my take on it. That has to be redesigned so that none of those things happen. And in this current situation, there might be some problems, but um, a little redesign, this could work. But let's look at it in terms of um, the five golden rules, which is the point of this. So there is a kitchen triangle. Um, it seems like they tried too hard in this one. Uh, easy cleanup. They've kind of taken care of that pretty easily. And um, that's fine. It's very social kitchen. It's nice and open. There's no seating again, extra storage, which is good. So I guess if social to you means someone has to be sitting at the island, then no, this does not cover the bases of being a social space. But if social is, hey, it's just open to the rest of the house. And just beyond that is some extra seating and whatnot so that we can all converse and be in the same environment together, then yes, that's fine. So I don't think it needs to uh, it needs to be uh, seating for that reason. I, I would rather it be like this, to be honest. So very, very good. Nice extra deep island. Uh, and especially you need the extra deep island if you're going to stuff that range in there like that. Always good to have extra space behind it. Of course, in my eyes, okay, yes, there's lots of landing area on both sides of that range. So that's all fun and dandy. I don't like their location, but that's fine or whatever. Um, putting stuff away seems very easy, but again, the fridge is kind of tucked in too far. And if the fridge was on the outside, then you could use that island, put away stuff. It's not tucked in the kitchen. You know, again, these are all like the little details that you work out with the designer to figure out what the best solution is for your kitchen. And if that happened here and it was the best solution, then by all means, that's fine. Um, it's what I'm looking at it from eyes of someone who doesn't live there, who didn't have the conversations and who, you know, really, it, you know, I have, I have nothing, I don't care. Right. I just like, I can pull, pick this apart because I didn't put any money into it or invest anything but someone else did and hopefully they had those conversations where that this is exactly the design that they wanted and you know by the workmanship and the looks of these kitchens i would say that they're probably in pretty good hands i mean these are these are pretty decent spaces overall that's the last one no no here's a, another view of that very nice vertical grain they do that thing with the countertop all the time under cabinet lighting is nice always good to have paneled refrigerator 
So, you know, that gives you a good look. Um, that's the last one. So that's that five golden rules and us looking at them in terms of these floor plans, kind of an interesting way to do it. And just to see, those are some kind of things that you can do when you're looking at renovating your kitchen space is to go through, okay, how, how do these things work? How am I going to clean up? How do the doors operate? How am I going to put stuff away and store things? Where are certain things located that I use often and frequently where, you know, all the different questions that you have and try not to get lost in all of the guidelines and regulations and all the regulations are different. I guess if there are regulations, you have to make sure you pay attention to those, but, but the guidelines can be somewhat subjective a lot of the times. And so it's important to work with a designer, work with someone you trust, work with your own brain sometimes just to figure out, okay, does this make sense or, or what? So um, that that's the five golden rules. And I hope that was helpful. If you're watching to this point, thanks so much for being here. Uh, we're going to dive into the chat for just a little while. I do want to put your attention on the um, poll that's running on YouTube if you're watching this live. So if you had the chance right now, you could change anything about your kitchen. Would you change your cabinetry, your countertops, or your appliances? If you could just have enough money to change one particular thing, you're only allowed to change one. And so far, uh, the votes are saying... That 57% uh, would say cabinetry is something that they would want to change. 25% for countertop and appliances, 19%. So my take on it in my own personal kitchen, I would probably upgrade my countertop uh, before anything else because kitchen is new, the appliances are new, and the countertop's just, um, well, I shouldn't say just. It's it's laminate, which is what was affordable, and it looks beautiful and fine, Okay. But I probably would upgrade it to something else. And I'd probably upgrade it to any number of different stones that are out there. I'd I have to see. I don't know. I'd have to go look around. But I, I am loving the look of quartzite, I guess, right now. But that always changes. So hope, hope, hopefully you can vote before the end of the night. That'd be awesome. Um, I want to jump into the chat. So bear with me here. I'll bring some of these up. We have a bunch in a few minutes to go. And Gretchen's saying, we have similar island views. I warned a family member that she'd regret a cooktop on the island. She insisted, guess what she dreams of changing? LOL, yeah. You know, I mean, those are things that uh, sometimes we see a picture of or we think is a good idea, but not necessarily the best idea. I, I'm not a fan of a cooktop in an island either. I'm not a fan of anything in an island. I've said that over and over again. But I, you know, Hopefully those are the things that you can you can take away. If you catch a video of mine or a live stream and you're thinking of that, then maybe think about it again. It might be the right decision for you. That's the thing. There's no right or wrong when it comes to a lot of these things. And my advice or anyone else's advice here is just, you know, it's very subjective. And I have years of experience. Okay, fine. That doesn't mean that you shouldn't have a range top in your island. But... I don't think you should. You know what I mean? Like you gotta like weigh it out. So that's just the way that goes. And here you go. Matthew's saying, hey Matthew, I have a cooktop in my island and love it. So exactly my point is not all advice um, works for everybody and some people actually love it. Uh, the kitchen I grew up at, grew up with in my home, my parents' home, they had a range uh, cooktop in a you know, peninsula basically an island. There's no, there's no seating there. That's just the way it was. And it was fine. No, no one ever like, was like, ah, this is, this is horrible. Just the way it goes. So Matthew loves it and he has one. So that's the perfect person to ask, <laughs> but some people have them and they don't like them. And they're also a good person to ask. You got to kind of weigh it out. So that's why it's important to get some opinions and then, you know, really work it out to see what works for you. Well, maybe the reason he likes it is because he's going to flush the ceiling vent to it, which is a really great way to do it so you don't have a downdraft or some big thing hanging from the ceiling. So that works. Uh, Phil's filling in. Phil is Phil is on the short list to be a moderator, and he's really – he's pushing it. You know, like he's 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 got the resume in. Since Jackie isn't here, be sure to give this a thumbs up. It really helps the channel. <laughs> You're on the short list, man. I'm telling you, you're you're this close to being a moderator, like this close. You're almost there. You're just so blush red tonight. I don't know. I hope you're doing okay. You don't have a fever or anything. 
There you look again. Mark is always so helpful. <sighs> I love my new kitchen just as it is. But Helen, if you could, if I, if I could just come right now and change something in your kitchen, you got to vote, even though you love your kitchen. Make sure you vote, everyone, on that. I don't know what, I don't know if that helps the channel or not. I don't think it does. It just is interesting and it's something interactive that you can do. Lynn's saying, so many of these opinions really depend on size and layout of the kitchen. Yeah. And it's a good, good point is that these myself included these are all opinions and that's why like when i do a rendering for someone and we break down a kitchen design and then we show a different rendering of a different layout for that same kitchen you can see oh there's multiple ways to design this space and some ways make a little more sense than others that's definitely true um but then it really comes down to to opinions based on the particular layout and the the kitchen that you're working with. So that's a really great take on that. Is when someone looks at the space and says, "Well, I don't like that," you know, they're, they're just coming through a filter of what they particularly don't like. But if it works for the person that's using that space, then you can all beat sand because that's all that matters, right? Uh, I'm not going to be living there. And I, some people ask me my opinion in the industry for years. Well, what would you pick? And be like, don't ever ask me that. Don't ask me what I would pick because I'm not going to live there. And be quite honest. I don't care. I don't care what you put in your kitchen. I want it to be functional so that you don't hate me. But I don't, I don't care about a lot of those things. So get it the way you love it and then you'll be happy. So that's important. All right. And not caring is 